Yeah. I mean, I was freaking out. I've been a huge fan of the book since I was in third grade, and um, it's crazy to think that I get to be in on a show. It's crazy. He did. He did it on Twitter. He said, "Does this make me older?" Ryan did. He said on Twitter. He said, um, "I think he tweeted like, does this make me older, Percy Jackson?" I really wanted to say, "Does this make me younger, Deadpool?" But I didn't. But does it? <laughs> so, what quality personally do you admire the most? What quality? Um, I think he always finds a way to put, like, to find the humor in any situation. It could be anything, like anything in the books. He finds somehow, like, a way to, to just find the humor in it. You know. Um, and for you, what, what was your experience working with uh, Lin Manuel? Lin-Manuel Miranda, um, he couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately, but he's probably the coolest, one of the coolest people you'll ever meet. He's hilarious, he'll randomly like break out into song, which is like the most Lin-Manuel Miranda thing to do. Really off topic, but when I was a kid, I used to walk on the balls of my foot all the time. For whatever reason, when I was like, f like three, four, or five, um, I still hadn't read the books by this point. And my parents had to get me to walk normal. Like they were constantly <laughs> telling me to put my heel on the ground. And you know, however many years later, I have to walk like that again for Grover. <laughs> and I completely forgot that I used to walk like that as a kid. And now I'm doing it again for Grover. So you know, it's kind of full a full circle moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think for me, I mean, since I read the books so young, I was in third grade, I think, like nine or like eight. Um, I feel like that kind of molded my sense of humor yeah. at like such a young age. So now it's like, I like like going back and, and being able to like film all of these scenes that I read when I was younger. It's just like it happens so naturally because I'm just so used to that by now. You know what I mean? We have very similar senses of humor, mm -hmm. I think. I feel like I relate to her because of um, the things that she does, and I like. I don't know how to explain that, but like, I feel like in certain times when you read this book, even though it's coming from Percy's perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like the way how he describes certain things, I feel like I can connect to how he's seeing her, if that makes sense. Like, uh, for example, and sometimes he might say something like, you know, uh, she looked pretty mad and stuff, but I know that deep down inside she actually was hurt or something. Or like, I'm not saying I am hurt or whatever, <laughs> mad, but like, I'm just saying, like, for example, like, I feel like um, I'm like Annabeth, like, I will, I might look uh, like something, but actually I'm like something different. Like sometimes people will be like, I don't know why they say this, because I have a smile on my face all the time, but sometimes people will say things like, Oh, I thought you didn't like me. You were like, I thought you were mad or something. And I'm like, no. Like, why, why would I be mad? And then, like, when they come up to me, though, I'm actually like, hi, guys, nice to meet you and all that stuff. And whatever and ever and ever. And I feel like that's with Annabeth. Like, you might take that mm -hmm. the wrong way. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, you know, you might look at her and be like, oh, yeah, I don't want to hang around her. She looks mean. But actually, she's, she's really not. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I feel like the one that actually sounds most exciting is you two. No, um, mine's is very dry. <laughs> Yours not dry. Mm -hmm. We all had pretty like expression. we all had very yeah. different auditions yeah. Yeah. for sure. I, <laughs> my friend who originally got me into the books in the first place sent me the open call. I had no clue that they were making a Percy Jackson show, and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get this. I, I I probably won't submit, and I got the audition again from my agents, and I was in New York working on a different project, and I was like, you know what, I'll submit one as like a joke, it'll be like good practice, because mm -hmm. it's such an iconic role, like Grover is one of the main three, and I grew up, like, these books almost raised me, and so I grew up like looking up to these three, and looking up to Grover, and I was like, ah oh, yeah, this is for someone else, there's no way I'm gonna get this. Mm -hmm. So I sent in the tape, and three months later, I still haven't heard back from them, I'm still in New York, and I get like a proper callback, like with new sides, like in my name, and they're like, oh, we want you to do it again. And like with these new sides, and I, it was basically an indication that they remembered who I was. So I started freaking out. And then I kept auditioning until I got to the chemistry reads, whereas where, you know, which is where I met these two. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I didn't hear back for another three months. And then 
my manager called and told me I'd booked it, and then there was a lot of screaming, and I don't remember the rest of the day. <laughs> I didn't eat for like the whole day. Yeah, something. probably. It's a great question. This, a lot of these questions are like catching me off guard. They're like yeah. really great. Hey, good. Good, good to you? see you since the uh, Adam yeah. project. Yeah, it's exactly right. Really, I haven't. I've never gotten that question. That's very good. And I guess I'm like. I, I guess I'd ask him, "What's it like?" I mean, that, that it's all over and that you're not gonna revisit it again. And um, I guess like keep reading the books. I guess that's the only piece of advice I give him, just to like keep it fresh in your mind. Like um, for us, it was definitely. Um, well, I mean, I don't want to speak for all of us. I feel like for me, it was um, us running away from Cerberus. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. There was absolutely nothing there. There was, <laughs> and <clears throat> actually, there was. It was this man in this like tight blue bodysuit sprinting literally to us. It looked so creepy. We were like funny because like. You know, when they said go, you just see like this guy just like come up and pop up out of nowhere and just start running. But it was just a blue screen and really that's we put our imagination into that. <laughs> I wish I could water bend for a long, long time. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I don't know. I, I I used to like every time I see a spider, that's like my worst fear. Oh it's like bad <laughs> arachnophobia. But I'd I'd like try to get my hand close in case it wanted to bite me. Yeah. You know? If it happened to be radioactive. If it happened to be random radioactive spider running around. Great question. There's, a lot of these questions are like catching me off guard. They're like yeah. really great. I don't know. I'm thinking about this. Um, I guess I really want to see the uh, the final season. Um, yeah. I don't think, I mean, I guess the uh, when he when he jumps in the River Six mm. with like Nico and then he has to fight Hades. I really want to see how that kind of like turns out. Um, and you know, that whole scene when he's under and he sees Annabeth kind of like pulling him out um, in his head. So I can't wait to see how that all turns out, you know? My, my first two questions here about the audition process, because right. I'm making them, the things you wanted to do. I think a sense of humor audition process. Um, <laughs> I auditioned back in January 2021 in like February, and I hear back from them all the way until like August or September or something. And then I did like two callbacks and then in the next January, Rick called me and told me I got the exactly. Testing for Annabeth and Grover, so yeah. I was automatic. Um, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I really had to prove myself, though. He, he, I don't think he ever did prove himself. Oh, okay. Um, this is the first time he, I'm hearing it. This, so. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was. It, I, I didn't know you felt he, like that. He so. really tried. That's that's oh. the most important part. He tried. Appropriate. Uh, are in. <laughs> He's lying. I feel like. At the beginning, at least, uh, he's still kind of a kid, and yeah, um, yeah, there was no him. acting involved. For no him. acting. He didn't have to like tone down his coolness at all. Yeah, I've I've told myself that a couple times. <laughs> oh, but um, I and he's 24, I'm but 20, acts like a 12. Yeah, he was like a 12 year old, but he has that. Mm -hmm. He he has the experience and, and the wisdom that might come with you know having lived for 24 years, and that's something that um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's something that I really wanted to. To, I guess kind of put at the forefront that he is kind of he knows how to work his way around the gods he understands this world very very well and um yeah I, I was glad that I kind of got to work on that with humor actually you know like um like I wanted to bring that out because there's a lot of scenes in here where Percy is completely unscripted yeah <laughs> what people say online and stuff you know um there's positive and negative but he told us like you know to always stay positive and to remember that as a reminder that he picked us not mm -hmm. like you know like not just some random person just said oh i want these two that's like something in the back of our head like to think like no matter what any of these people say like the person who made this picked us so we, like if he thinks that we're gonna be great for this then i then we definitely know that this is gonna be great so this is his you know his passion project it's his you know kind of child he's been it's easy to forget that he's a mediator for a reason and it's because he's very empathetic as our acting coach would say he's a somatic listener um <laughs> he he's very like tuned in to everyone's emotions he he can kind of see th through people in a sense. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right like phrase for it, but he definitely can tell if there's something that's being hidden or something, someone's not quite honest. And uh, I think talking to Rick, it, it was nice to kind of discuss that and 
also bring that up to the to, to the forefront. All right, Walker, what you got for us? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to think of something. I think they summed it up. Rick's the best. Oh, he That's all I can say. Yeah. Was, I, I can't believe anybody would do that. that is I know. So... Every time we walk by, or every time I walk by Chalice of the Gods, I always like to open it up and look at the dedication. Mm. <laughs> it's the coolest thing ever. Um, especially with my main cast. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, just some... Um, no, everyone is Faye. It was some... I've, I don't think I've ever learned more from someone than I did with him in that one-on-one -on -one scene. He was so good, and he was such a professional about it, like, about every little, like, slip-up that happened. He had such, like, a grace about it, and I don't know, it was incredible, like, every moment. And stuff, after I seen all that stuff happen, and I take the hat off and things, like, I was just like, I was like, how dare you, like, betray us like this and stuff, and I felt like, I reached a certain point to where, cause that's when Luke, like seeing Percy on the ground and stuff, like, you know, like suffering and things really. And then, um, and then I'm seeing Luke standing there, the person who was my best friend, my brother, just betraying all of us really and stuff. And I thought I could be so close to him when I see him right there in front of my eyes, just like be mm -hmm. this whole different person. With with like Leah in general, like Leah specifically, it's like, she really yeah. gives us stuff to work off of, which is really great, like, just actor-wise. And um, I just get nothing over here. I get nothing <laughs> from him. Um, well, I don't have much to work with, okay? I think you he doesn't have much to offer. Him. Really give you stuff to work off of, and I think almost every co-star on the show we've had. Maybe. Uh, I can't tell. There's a couple of the them. The one where he's on the chair? Um, not that one. I think I can't tell that one. <laughs> but he was showing me a video. He was talking about it. He went to Ireland to film something. Amazing. And he was at a pub, and he uh, he saw a band playing, and he was right next to him. And he just stood up and pulled a harmonica out of his pocket <laughs> and just started playing with him. What? That's like the coolest thing. No, no, no. Yes, actually. No, no. My mother has to, uh, something, whatever. Yeah. Wow. It's so, like that whole scene after she's like screamed. That wasn't acting. <laughs> I was genuinely terrified that she was gonna like hurt me or something. Gonna show anymore? I think I'm gonna lose my job. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Your character. Remember so. that heavy one that he said he had to wear? Yeah. Yeah, it's like 50 pounds or something. Oh, like yeah. the vampire yeah. like cloak that he wore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Oh. You oh, the video cool. with his wife yeah. wearing like the whole yes. of blue food. <clears throat> had to be blue dye twenty. <laughs> like that sour punch can either like blue gatorade or my mom made pretty good blue pancakes one time okay yeah oh, yeah um those blue like sugar cookies with the frosting on them those mm -hmm. are really oh, good. like the blue and yellow ones yeah you know what i'm talking about i know exactly what you're talking about um i feel like I man it was a lot um one of them where it was like a proud moment was when we were at the top of that mountain. And it was, um, it was like a really quick, uh, like word that I said when I took it out, but, um, it was at the top of the mountain of, um, uh, capture the flag. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's when I was telling Percy, I was like, I was like, you know, like, okay, bye. Then I took the hat on and I did like this. And he was so confused and then I took it off and I was like, it's a gift from my mom and stuff like, just like that really quick thing right there, like my face even like was like a proud, like this is a gift from my mom. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's here and stuff. And I know you couldn't really see it. Andrew, um, he told me, he said like, in certain scenes I have like a deep emotion to it. Just like my hat was always on the side of me. So he said, just always like tap in, like feel around with it. Like know that your mother's connection, your only connection to your mother is right here. And that's what he told me and I feel like, a lot of times, I don't know if you can see it, but I was definitely like tapping the side of my hat and feeling it. Uh, probably one of the days in the Aries fight, it was, I think it was like the second day in, and uh, at one point I'm, I get like tossed in a puddle, and I was soaking wet, and I, 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 I got down on the ground and I rolled through it once <laughs> to get wet, and um, I stood up and I looked around and we we're on a beach and uh, on the volume stage. Edge Copeland was standing in front of me. I had Riptide in my hand, and I was just thinking that like this is like what I was waiting. Andrew, our acting coach, he did a huge deep dive of the books. He scoured it like we all did when we started. And Uncle Ferdinand was like a huge part of of like for Grover in the books, and getting to bring that to life, like getting to give Grover his moment. Because you know I've said this before, but 
it's easy to forget that Grover is like his own guy. He's not just a mediator. Mm -hmm. He's not just a protector. He's going through his own stuff. He has so much to prove after, you know, Thali and all that, that just getting to, I guess, get, like do him. Uh, something that he did, um, he's always like learning something new, you know, um, which I think is good for real life because um, we should always be learning something, you know? And uh, he's always learning something different. Like every year, I think, uh, last year when we were filming it was marine biology i think and uh he was going like a whole college course on that and uh i think that was awesome you know yeah yeah all right um oh, no go for so, it please you sure yeah go for it <laughs> um for um my mind just went completely blank um oh yeah no no i got it sorry um he told me one thing he said no matter what people will say about you he said remember I picked you so like that was just mm -hmm. something right there and I was like ugly ugly like <laughs> <laughs> I was like thank you thank you so much just like it's just like and the way how he said it too was like it, it was like crazy he was it was so humble he's like remember if anybody says anything about you just remember I'm the one that picked you and you know coming from the creator of all of this and stuff him saying that I was like oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm this isn't something really he said, but again, something he 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 did he did, and he's always doing. Uh, Leah talked about this before, but he is insanely humble. He has such like an air of humility about him. He, I remember this like I'll never stop thinking about this because it's such an insane sentence to say out loud. He walked across Mammoth Studio from the production office to like give to like hand deliver me a sign of set a set of signed books and then apologized for doing it because he was interrupting my skin coach um but also those those first couple of weeks at yancey academy that we just got to film together mm -hmm. that that definitely helped getting to you know just have a couple of weeks together with nancy boba fit too that was so mm -hmm. much olivia fun. was amazing olivia was hephaestus yeah, it, I think it was, hephaestus. <laughs> it was either hephaestus or uh thalia it wasn't hephaestus it was, remember that scene, there's a scene in the Tunnel of Love where I'm going like, oh, this is Hephaestus's story. Oh yeah. Oh, and I just couldn't say it, Hephaestus's. I kept saying Hephaestus's. It's just, it's just <laughs> it was hard. So funny. Kleos was pretty tough too. Kleos, I just kept forgetting, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool, like, sorry guys. But like, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be like. Go fast, take it. Oh, I just. I, I really hope there's a monologue that I can learn another one. <laughs> um, but I think, well, I'm not. I'm not in Deadpool 3. Um, I haven't heard anything from them, but uh, they told me that there was going to be a monologue for me to learn. Percy kind of does this too. Like, if he's in a tricky situation, not tricky, but like, um, like emotional wise, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Tricky emotional wise, he'll kind of kind of deflect with sarcasm. And I think that's something I kind of do in real life. Well, you know, I, I think I speak for all of us when I say like we were huge fans of the book series, mm -hmm. like growing up. And Walker kind of summed it up perfectly earlier. Um, we want to make something that we're proud of too, something that we would want to watch as fans of the books. And it's 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 a lot of like good pressure adapting something so iconic. Uh, it kind of like we want to make something again that we're. I think you summed it up for me. I definitely told my dad and my brother. Wait, no, <laughs> my brother because my dad was on the uh, and my mother knew too. So yeah, I feel like it was. My brother, for like my cousins and stuff, I was like, oh, it's because what just happened and stuff. But um, weekly, no, I did not tell anybody else but my brother. Um, and because he's a really big fan of the books. Like he like he was a really, really big fan, like a diehard fan about it. So he's really the one who got me into um, reading it. So I was so grateful to tell him that I got the part and stuff. And he was very... Um, right before... I got on like the interview where they told me um, I got the part. I was on FaceTime with all the people from Secret Headquarters <laughs> up to do the interview. And then like 20 minutes later, the guy who sent me the open call, he, he's a very close friend of mine. He, he got me into the series. He, he's known me since like I was born. And I, I would, like he sent me the, I had no idea that they were making a show. He sent me the open call and I got the audition a, a little bit after that. And he is, I think the first person I told. Cause like, yeah, I, I likely wouldn't be heroes of olympus count it's mm. a very good question that is a very good sorry it's i was thinking it was a joke i don't know if this is like a thing that he can do because he has the shoes but i just want like her this is about a 12 year old boy named percy jackson 
who goes on, who learns that he's a demigod, son of Poseidon, and goes on a quest to retrieve Zeus's master bolt before. Who is your favorite guest star to work with this season and why? You don't mind. My name is Jessica Parker because she's really good and she's the best. Adam Copeland. Adam Copeland. He's awesome. He's the coolest person ever. <laughs> I think. Say five. Yeah. Because. Come on, Obviously. it's fun. It's like the yeah. finale of the first five books. I want to say my second favorite is probably book three because of all like the new characters they introduce and because it's in the winter this time. Yeah. It says recreate, by the way. Oh, is that for me? <laughs> yep. Do you want me to be Dan? Yeah, yeah, you say, oh no, no be, you're going to be Rick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Walker? <laughs> that's, basically, that's basically what I did. That's my reaction right there. You did that and then you left. <laughs> and then I just left. Just yeah, I know, I just left the Zoom call. Yeah. For Arian, what is one Easter egg you think diehard fans should look out for? That's, that would be awesome. The What's video that? game kind of. It's like a series where this. Is a book? It's like Earth has to fight is it aliens. Butterfield? Wait, in universe? The movie? So like, yeah. it doesn't have to be like.